Well, here we are again, and I'm back bringing you another episode of SCSI Escapes. And this time, we got something a little different because this is the M25, the big orbital motorway that surrounds London. It's always busy, and there's always roadworks. And today, for the first time, we are crossing it and going outside of London. Buses. Okay. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. All this delicious looking stuff. That's a beauty. Brookman's Park is just down that way, which is a very posh neighborhood. So where are we headed today? Well, not too far. Just across the M25, because we've got a bit of a loose end to pick up on. This is the place you've all been itching to see and hear about. <coughs> That's right, we're in Potter's Bar. So I'll tell you why we're here in a bit. But first of all, let's have a little look around this strange place of Potter's Bar. It's a funny little place. It seems to have like two high streets almost. This being one of them. And another one, kind of over the other side, which we'll check out in a bit. And there's always loads of cyclists going through it on the weekend because it's, it's kind of a gateway to the countryside. Oh, we've got a park there, which I didn't know about. I'll come back to it. Another enormous bus garage. We seem to keep coming across these. Have you ever seen so many red buses? We had one in Edmonton. One in Wilsdon. And now one here in Potter's Bar. Well, if you need any darts or trophies, or some angling. This is the place to come. They look like they've got it all. <laughs> so as you know, every couple of weeks or so, I'm gonna try and drop in a couple of outside of London episodes, just to get a bit of variety going and show you what maybe rural England or rural south of England looks like. That's just one of these episodes. We're gonna explore a sort of local town on just on the outskirts of London, just across the M25. I do have a connection here and I will be going there a little bit later. So I did see a little park down here earlier, which I've never really known about. So I'm gonna have a look at that. Maybe it's a little hidden gem, who knows? Now what have we got? Welcome to Parkfield. Okay, this is a new one. Worth a look, I guess. Okay. There's a bit of a gravel path here, let's try that. Look at this. This one. As you know, I make these things up as I go along. So we are literally exploring together. There's a massive pond. Hmm. I have never been here, I have no idea where I am. Ooh, that's a nice sight. Even though it's a dead tree, that was look good, didn't it? Very graphic. A Roman kiln? Huh. On this site, just below the surface, lay the remains of a Roman kiln, which is believed to have been used for the manufacture of tiles during the second half of the first century AD. Well, what do you know? Somewhere out there. Right, let's carry on down this slope, down the park. Or park field, as they seem to call it here. Uh, let's do this one. Oh yes, this is rather nice. Oh, look at that. Hmm, that's gonna take some getting to. Good boy, thank you. It's for walking, not a, it's not a riding route, but it's one heck of a carving. Oh, I can get there. Here we go. Look at this thing. This is pretty epic. Let's get round the sunny side so we can have a proper look. There we are. Why do they do that with all dead trees? That looks great. Well, obviously it's got a Canadian touch. Looks like a wolf there. But the way the blocky figures are also makes me think of the USSR. 
looks a bit Soviet. <laughs> Not that Soviets would make something like this, but it almost looks a bit mosaic-like. But I like it. That was a little bit of the parkland. It was rather nice. Some big houses here. People have got lots of space. <laughs> and wacky ideas. <laughs> It's a bit different to inner London, and not that scuzzy. Okay, well, this is the other high street, probably more of the main high street of Potter's Bar. Now, let's go exploring. What is up here? Not much. When I came to this area more often, one thing I noticed a lot of was Oxfam shops. There you go. Things like that. Secondhand shops. There's another one, cancer research. <laughs> so that's tells me that you get a lot of old folk here. Here we've got a railway bridge. We've got a bit of a story about that. And there's the train going over the top at nearly 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Just up here we've got Potter's Bar railway station. And there's the platform. the track and you can just about make out the bridge there that's the railway bridge with Darks Lane the road leading to the high street underneath it so this is Potter's Bar railway station and it's one of those stations just outside of London where people park in allocated spaces to get into London there's the train so that train going past over the bridge and through the station through the platform has come from London down that direction, probably King's Cross, and is heading out to maybe Norfolk, that direction, generally. And I used to get that train. I used to get that train every morning. And on the 10th of October, 2002, the 12.45 left King's Cross and was on its way to King's Lynn in Norfolk. And by the time it reached this station here, it was doing about 97 miles per hour. It consisted of four or more carriages. The carriages three and four hit a set of points down there and derailed. And carriage number four flipped over, flew through the air, damaged the bridge. A pedestrian underneath was actually killed by falling debris. And the carriage itself, number four, slid along the platform there, terrifying the people and got lodged on the platform at the end. Seven people died that day in total. It was a horrendous accident probably one of the worst in the country. As you can see from the speed of the trains going through it now. So it's a high speed rail link, so they don't all stop here. A lot of fast trains go out to further destinations and that'll be going into King's Cross. You'll probably stop at Finsbury Park on the way and then King's Cross. So unfortunately, it's not a very cheery note. It's got a bit of a dark history here at uh, Potter's Bar Station. I am the back alley master. Right, past the trucks. So what we have here is Potter's Bar Industrial Estate. Oh look, Rolls Royce. So if you've got a roller, needs a service, bring it here. If you remember the Acton episode, the second one, we went to my first place of work. And that first place of work, I told you the story about how we, we were there and one day the bailiffs turned up. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was an interesting day. We needed somewhere to make a run to, to go and set up shop in somebody else's unit. I didn't know any of this, I was just going with the flow. And it's up here we ended up coming to this beautiful industrial area <laughs> that you can see. And the place was right there. Wow. Oh, still got the sign up. <laughs> this is nuts. Oh, it's mad being here again. So I used to arrive here off my, with my bike. I can't remember what I did with it. I think I put it in the warehouse around there. That's the door we went in, and up to the office is up there. Or was it up there? I don't know. Down here was storage. We also had the unit three over there, for more storage. And there were all these little garages and workshops. Sometimes I would have a change and come up and come to work on my motorbike instead of taking the train. I would fly up the A10, I think it was and um, come up around here and rumble my fat sounding V-twin motorbike and park it up here. It was great. Used to turn all the heads. And of course, everybody around here is a petrol head, so they all loved it. 
So this is more or less the loose end of my time working in London. This was one of the last places. It gets confusing because way back in the Ealing episode, I showed you that place of work near Hangar Lane. That actually came after this. We moved from here to there. Yeah, I got around a bit. <laughs> Hence I know London so well. Scuzzy little places. That's all right, mate. Fly right away. Move over. Move over, Rover. Yeah, once again, I think I've got myself a bit lost, but that's the whole point, isn't it? That's why I'm doing this. This is what I love doing. So I think this is probably the end of the true story of all my comings and goings in and around London. If I think of anything else, I'll add it on at some point. This has been Potter's Bar. Hmm, so far. And we're going to carry on. False ending. We're going to check out a bit more, go through the high street, and then head back. Here we go. Here's our next left by this church of some kind. There you go. There's, you know, me and churches. It's just one of those church things. There's something kind of slightly American feeling to me about this, or even a little bit South African. Oh my God, check that out. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. What is it, Austin Maxi? Oh, I'm good. It's because I'm from that era. 1750, in that brown they did in the 70s. I mean, they were terrible cars, but you know, he's kept it looking nice, fair play from the British Leyland Motor Company. We typically made cars to fall apart, like stock cars. <laughs> Hope he wasn't listening, but it looks nice. Well done, sir. See, 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 I keep saying it, on a Porsche 928. Come on. That was my favorite Porsche at one point. It's in a bad way, but it's lovely. <clears throat> Rust down there in the wheel arch, paint coming off and crazing, but a 928. Music fans, there's a classic ACDC song, of which I can't remember the name of it, but Bon Scott sits on the bonnet of a 928 as they ride round the field. That gives a Porsche 928 all the credibility it needs. All your other Porsche cars can go do one. 928 for me every time. <laughs> Sticking with the car theme, more London taxis than you know what to do with. And they're all electric. Right, well, this is the main crossroads of Potter's Bar. Dark's Lane, down there, train station just around the corner, fish and chip shop, nail base, whatever, stuff, <laughs> other stuff. So there's the train station bridge, and you can imagine a train, oh, imagine the noise as a train crashes into that and skids its way along to the station right there. Let's see what's up here, because I have no idea. What services can I offer you from this industrial estate? Let's have a look. Not much by the looks of it. Okay, would anybody like, would anybody like some dental work doing? Ah, bugger it, that's it, that's the end of it. That's the most boring industrial state I've ever been to. Back on the high street, Oxfam shops, stuff like that. One more go at finding something half interesting in Potter's Bar. What the hell is this? We seem to be spotting vehicles, but what on the earth is this thing? This is a homemade vehicle, without a doubt. Look at that. <laughs> that is funky. This is what you get in Potter's Bar. Boringness, quite honestly. And as with a lot of the UK, what you also get is the Weatherspoons. Very popular, cheap drinking pubs. Really nice on a sunny afternoon. Oh, what's going on here? Potter's Bar Farmer's Market, what a find. Oh. Come on, I've got to have a look around this. I think we found something worth coming for. All this delicious looking stuff. Oh, that looks too good for me. Hello, how are you? Olive oils, pestos, fucking paste. <laughs> it looks lovely. But I can't carry anything today. <laughs> well, you can put it in your pocket. It's on the <laughs> Bit of craft. 
But how about this? Nice little find on a Sunday, sunny Sunday afternoon in Potter's Bar. A really busy little farmer's market. I'll have to come again. With bags and a car, maybe. Ooh, anybody want an ice cream? We're away from the madness in the centre of that farmer's market. And we're down this little side street now. A little, looks like quite a nice little road, actually. Yeah, look, these are, there's some money houses now. Big, spacious, big driveways. I'm thinking this is a nicer part of town. Bar, what do you call it? Bar. Oh dear. People don't know how to drive though. Give way to the right. Right, how not to do a roundabout? Like this. Bugger it, I'm not going to kill anybody, am I? This is an unexpected turn in Potter's Bar. Who knew? Just got the rest of the hill. Ooh, it's a bit steep, but I'll live. You know, it's funny, isn't it? This morning, I really didn't feel like coming out. I wasn't in the mood. I really had to sort of wind myself up a bit to get into the mood. But as soon as I got out here, no problem. I'm loving it. I think it obviously kicks in my, I want to say endorphins, would that be right? I want to start feeling happy. I want to get out and about and check your places out. Yeah, my curiosity just kicks in and I start feeling great again. Look, can we find a pub? The Christmas decorations still up. What the? That's quite nice. Not sure about the Christmas decorations. I've got big wheels, I'm all right. Well, once again, Scuzzy London fails to find the scuzz. All in all, scuzz factor is low, I think. Probably about 30 to 40 percent. This is the anti scuzz. Well, look at this. It's a prime stag. I nearly bought one of them as my first car. Cracking cars look beautiful. Aluminium heads, though, apparently they warp, giving problems. So I was told, so I got to rely on Scimitar instead. As we do a little vehicle tours, look at this one. That's a beauty. Nice. I do know what it is, but I don't know what it is. It's a folly arch, which is a kind of a fake thing, just like a... What's, what's folly mean? It's like a pretend thing, isn't it? Like some rich person did it just for fun. Something like that. Right, so here we have the Folly Arch of Potter's Bar. I don't know if this is still Potter's Bar because Brookman's Park is just down that way, which is a very posh neighbourhood. Well, that just about brings us to the end of our time here in Potter's Bar on our little scuzzy excursion today. I hope you found it interesting. There were some different things that we saw in different areas, so maybe that gives you an idea of what it's like just over the other side of the M25. KTM boys there, crew of my own. And if you like this sort of thing, if this sort of content's half of interest, think about subscribing, giving it a like, and maybe passing the odd comment. It'll all help to get the channel rolling, to give it some momentum, so I can keep doing more of this sort of thing and show you a bit more of what the UK looks like. Look at this, a Chevy. Not too many of them in the UK. All right, so this part, it's a really nice little downhill section. It goes on for a few kilometers and it's pretty much down most of the way. There's been times that I've really given this some welly all the way down. But today, I'm just gonna enjoy the cruise. Yeah.